Hi, my name is Masha, I'm a blonde from Coding Blonde and welcome to October. <laughs> Did you know that October is the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month? So today's topic is cybersecurity. <laughs> I can't believe it, but it's almost been a year since I've uploaded my last Blonde Dictionary video and I'm very excited to tell you that I'm bringing them back with this explanation of cybersecurity. But before we go any further, I just want to make a little disclaimer that Blonde Dictionary was not meant to offend anyone or feed into any stereotypes, it was just planned words. And to avoid any confusion going forward, I decided to rename it to Coding Blonde Dictionary which it always has been, so there we go. <laughs> so without further ado, let's jump into cybersecurity. I don't know about you, but I find the words cyber and security pretty intimidating by themselves. And when they're put together, it's an intimidating cocktail. So I was very excited to dig into this topic and really understand what it is. All right, so think about your living space. Look around, what furniture do you have around you? Do you have any decorations, photos, furniture, maybe documents, valuables. What do you see around yourself? And how do you protect all of that? Do you lock your door when you are leaving the house? Do you close the windows? Do you look for other potential entrances through which a person, I guess, or a trained monkey could slip in and <laughs> steal your stuff? Do you do all of that stuff? Well, if you simplify cybersecurity, it's basically doing the same thing with the stuff that you own digitally. So looking for vulnerabilities, right? The entrances through which people can come in, let's say, um, and protecting those. Protecting them against people stealing your stuff or getting access to it. And let's be honest, you and I store a lot of information digitally uh, from documents, files, photos, videos, some other types of information, you know, personal information, and sometimes even credit card information. And just like with, you know, your real items, you don't want someone to come in and get hold of those things, especially if they're very personal, like your passport details or credit card information. And just like in the offline world, in the analog world, people online might have bad intentions. They might want to steal your information, leak it, ask for ransom, or try to get money from you using impersonation scam. So pretending to be your lost uncle who needs a surgery and is asking you to send him money. In fact, I was writing a blog post for the Department of Homeland Security, link is in the description if you're curious, and the amount of money people lose to cybercrime every year is ridiculous. It's crazy. And just like you and I, companies store valuable information online as well. So from internal and confidential documents that can be anything from presentations, trainings, methodologies, plans, strategies, research, whatever the company wants to preserve so that it doesn't become public information, to user data. Think of your Facebook account. How much information are you sharing with it? from your personal information, such as, you know, your name, date of birth, where you live and all that stuff, to the communication that you have with other people and just the fact that you're friends with this person, that you've gone to a university with this person. You know, it's all information that has to live somewhere. Even if it's encrypted, it lives somewhere on a server. And so people might potentially get hold of it and you never know how they would use it. And guess which company got hacked recently with 50 million accounts compromised? And I think I was one of those 50 million. Thank you, Facebook. <laughs> but let's get back to theory. In general, cybersecurity is concerned with preserving the following three things. Confidentiality, integrity, and the availability of information, which is also known as the CIA triad. Not to be confused with the other CIA, which stands for Central Intelligence Agency. So let's start with confidentiality, which is similar to privacy. You want to make sure that sensitive information can only be accessed by trusted people. So security measures protecting confidentiality of information need to identify the person who's trying to access the files and see whether they can have access to these particular files. And this is normally done by authenticating. So a very good example is using passwords. If you're the right person, you should 
should know the password. Now I'll talk about multi-factor authentication later, which is the best way to protect yourself. But um, if you're curious right now, you can scroll down and uh, see that blog post that I've written. This is a very simple example, of course, and there are more sophisticated measures to protect confidentiality of information. But think of it this way, your password is the key to your house. This is how you can access your home and all of your belongings in there, or your mailbox. And if you have a safe at home that uh, you use to store all of your valuables, documents, all that stuff that potentially you don't want your younger brother or your roommate to see or access, and you're very likely to have a password or a key to that, that's another great example. Integrity is all about making sure that the information is trustworthy and accurate. So basically it's about making sure that data can't be changed by people who shouldn't change it. A great example of that is Google Docs. If you've ever used that before, you know that there are different types of permissions that you can give out to people when sharing the document. You can give them view only access, you can let them comment on things and suggest edits, or you can give them full editing permissions, in which case they can change the document anything on the document. And you have to make sure that people don't misuse the rights because you don't want someone to completely change everything and, or delete something that was important. Again, this is a very simple example, but it kind of shows the integrity part of the CIA triad. And availability is concerned with whether people who are allowed to access the information can actually access it and use it when they need to. So in this case, hardware needs to be maintained and protected from things like coffee, for example, to ensure that it doesn't fail and so to make sure that your information is not lost. Software should be always up to date and information should be backed up because ultimately you don't want to lose the information. And for the worst case scenarios, there needs to be a disaster recovery plan to recover from the loss of data. I'm currently going through the process of sorting through files on my hard drives and it is a mess. Thank you much for the past for not having a system of how to save things and just moving piles of mess from one place to another, from one hard drive to another hard drive. Oh, Jesus Christ, protect your <laughs> hard work. And when I'm done, I'm planning to back it all up on the cloud. In case of these things fail or, you know, get dropped in, the, in my coffee, or if I want to be able to access things remotely when I don't have them present with me. And I make sure that I back up my laptop regularly. Here's my personal example for you. Other than things like malware or attacks that are meant to erase files, there's also the denial of service attack, which is when hackers overload the server by sending too much traffic or too many tasks at the same time, so the server actually can't cope with it and shuts down. So the systems, websites, or programs that are running on this server also shut down and you can't access them. So to sum up, cybersecurity measures protect people and companies from attacks concerning confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. But because technologies sometimes develop faster than we can protect them, there are loopholes in the systems and vulnerabilities that emerge every single day. And there are people with malicious intentions that actually look out for them. And the recent Facebook hack is the perfect example of that. There was a vulnerability in the view as feature. So, you know, when you go on your account and you try to view it as someone else. And so hackers found that vulnerability and got into people's accounts. It was that little entrance that Facebook either forgot to shut down or didn't even know that it was there and people found it and got in. As our lives are becoming more and more digital and we're putting out more information about ourselves online, we're exposing ourselves to more risks. And this is why it's so important to understand what is cybersecurity and how you can protect yourself. And this October, and even past October, even after October ends, I will create more videos and blog posts on cybersecurity and on how you can protect yourself. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my blog. And of course, other Coding Blonde social media accounts. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.